Okay, um, it says state the domain. So we want to just uh, make sure we review this because I haven't seen you guys since uh, last week, Thursday. Uh, some of you guys never really learned this at all. So uh, let's go over it. Uh, why isn't the first one all real numbers? Tan takes square root of negative. So 9 minus x is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, negative x greater than or equal to negative 9. x less than or equal to 9. So we've got negative infinity, 9. Got that? Okay. Uh, why isn't this one all real numbers? So we got to eliminate 2. So negative infinity to 2. Union with 2 to infinity. Why isn't that one all real numbers? Can't divide by 0. What values would give you 0? Yeah, so I eliminate negative 2. And I eliminate 3. Why isn't the next one all real numbers? It is. Way to be brave and bold, Rachel. Like, who would disagree with the teacher? Uh-oh, what about the next one? Can't be negative, so 9 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0. I wish our college algebra teacher would have told us how to solve nonlinear inequalities. Like, had he told us that, that would have been really helpful in this situation. Nonlinear, you got to make a graph, don't you? Fortunately, it's a graph that you know. You know what it looks like, what shape. Parabola writes it up or upside down. Yep. Goes up through 9 in the top. Do you know where it crosses the x-axis? 3 and negative 3. Are we looking for where it's above or below? Where? Above. So therefore, we've got negative 3 to 3. What do you think? That, that's the one that gets people right there. No, no, no. That, that gets everybody. Their brain goes to mush. But we just tested on that, didn't we? We just tested on that. We know how to do that. We know how to do that. How about the next one? I got two problems here. What are my two problems? Yeah, square root of x, so that's x is greater than or equal to 0. I know I can't have negatives, so the top is done. What about the bottom? Okay, 1 or 0. X can't be 1 or 0 because that would be dividing by 0. So if you look at this, these two are in conflict with one another. If you state that X can't be 0 or 1, and you say that X has to be greater or equal to 0, well, they kind of overlap, don't they? So that means if you look at the graph, you know, if you want to start at 0, you want to go greater than 0, that's fine. But that graph actually includes 0 and includes 1. So you got to get rid of those, okay? So you don't want the blue graph. You want the green graph. So that would be from 0 to 1, union with 1 to infinity. And that's my domain. It's okay to say you don't like it. It's okay. It's also okay to say you do like it. I've had a lot of anger come through the classes today. People upset about 150-point tests and hundreds of pa pages of papers to write and all sorts of stuff. So I will receive your anger, and I won't take it personally. At any point, if you just want to say, I hate this, Gents, I won't, I won't freak out on you. You're like, okay, it's all right. 
All right, let's express our emotions and then let's get it under control. Let's do something really easy, okay? We look at a graph. It says, given the graph of the function, identify the following. So you learned how to plug in values and evaluate functions uh, uh, last week, but suppose we have the graph. Uh, f of negative 2, what that actually means is if you were to take negative 2 and plug it into the graph, what would the output be? What's the height of the graph at that spot? And it's 1. F of negative 1, that means... Uh, what is it? It's kind of tough to tell. It kind of looks like I have two possible values, don't I? Which one is it? Is it both of them? Remember, the definition of a function says that every element in the domain has exactly one element in the range. So if we say it's both, then it would not be a function. So which one is it? It's 1 because you got a closed circle. Yep. So f of negative 1 is 1. How about f of 0? Yep. Some people say, well, how do you know, Mr. Gens, there's no, there's no dot there. There doesn't have to be a dot. You just have to see the graph. How about f of 1? Ooh, yeah, I got kind of a couple circles going on there, don't I? So negative 2. And f of 2? Yeah, height of 1. How about the domain and range? What do you think about the domain of this guy? We'll pretend that there's arrows on the end here. They're not nicely drawn. Remember domain? I dragged this line across. Pull across here at some point. How about here? 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 Yeah, here. Yeah, how about here? Yeah, here? Here? All real numbers, huh? It's good everywhere. Domain, negative infinity to infinity. Range. That's where I grabbed the horizontal line. We'll cross down here. Here? How about there? There? How about there? Here? Here. Here. No, it misses that 2, doesn't it? So it goes from negative infinity to positive 2 with a parenthesis, no bracket. The final question says, what domain values satisfy f of x equals 0? So that means, what would you plug in for x to get an output of 0? And so I'm going to put this line right at 0. What values would you plug in to get an output of 0? Negative 3 and 4. Not negative 1 because f of negative 1 is 1. Very good. You guys are smart. Way to go. Flip it over. Let's do something really easy. Do you remember the vertical line test? What is it? You put the vertical line, or you drag it across. Okay, got it. All right, okay, that's your drag. Got it. All right, so put this vertical line, drag it across. Josie says we use this test to see whether or not it's a function. And so, whoop, stop that. Is this one a function? Yeah. How about this one? How about this one? Why? So what? Yeah, I, actually, how many times does this this vertical line cross that vertical line? An infinite number of times, doesn't it? Yeah. We actually got a conversation last hour about different levels of infinity, and uh, there were a few people who found it amusing. I think some people their brains started to hurt, so we won't talk about that. Uh, how about here? Yeah. Yep. So we've got uh, yes. No, no, yes. Wouldn't it be great if we could just look at an expression and instead of looking at the graph, we could know whether or not it's a function. Like 2x squared minus 4y equals 8. Do you think that one's a function? You don't. Why? 
Okay. That's a function. That's a cubic, right? That's the next cube. It's tough. Okay. Well, let's solve for y. You don't. <laughs> you don't know anything. Why don't you guys know something? Don't show up unless you know something. Gosh. <laughs> uh, YouTube. I'm not actually. We're all laughing right now. They're just. They're in the midst of studying for final exams and. I don't know. Whatever else happened this weekend. Somebody watched Stranger Things for the first time and their mind is blown. And, you know, it's just a lot to keep up with. So, Okay, so I solved for y, and I'm going to remember the definition of a function. The stupid definition says every input goes to exactly one output, right? Every input, just one output. Well, if you plug in something for x, do you think you'll come up with more than one y value? I mean, like, if I plug in zero, you can come up with, like, three or four y values? No, you're just coming up with one, right? Like, if you plug in zero, you get negative two. If you plug in two, like, if two squared is four, times one half is two, minus two is zero. Like, you plug something in, you get one thing out. So what would it look like if that wasn't the case? Well, look at this one. I, I solve for y I, by subtracting x squared from both sides. I get y squared is equal to 9 minus x squared. I square root both sides, and I get y is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared. But because I took the square root of the variable right here, I have to list both the positive and negative solutions. Okay, Both positive and negative solutions. So if you were to plug in 0 for x, you would get 9 minus 0, which is 9, and the square root of 9 is... 3, but it's saying list both positive 3 and negative 3. So we have 0, 3, and we would have 0, negative 3. Well, that means an input of 0 gives you two different outputs. Is that a function? No, in fact, this graph, it makes a circle. Okay? There's actually crosses in two spots all the time. So this is a function, and this is not a function. And so... Ashwell was on the right track when he talked about a different degree for the exponent, but really a different degree for y, and namely an even degree. Sometimes it works to have odd degrees. Like in this situation, if I subtract x, I get negative y cubed plus 3 is equal to negative x. And then subtract 3 from both sides. Negative y cubed equals negative x minus 3. And divide by my negative 1, y cubed equals x plus 3. How do you get rid of the cube? Hey, you cube root both sides. And so we get y is equal to the cube root of x plus 3. And you don't have to list a positive and a negative solution there because you are allowed to take the cube root of negatives. You're allowed to take the cube root of positives. As you notice in this situation, whatever you plug in for x, you, you get out just one output. Um, it's not going to give you multiple outputs, so this is a function. Okay. So if you get a y squared, it's usually a dead giveaway that it's it's most likely not a function. Okay. So we conclude with this today. That looks confusing, doesn't it? Does it look familiar at all? Have we seen something like it before? Yeah, I remember like the very first day we started off in this unit, uh, we looked at this piece right here. And I asked you to evaluate f of negative 3. Do you remember, did you plug that into the top or bottom? Yeah, you plugged it in the top. Why did you plug it in the top? Because negative 3 was less than 0. So that raises a really good question for us is, you know, how do we graph these things? And it's called a piecewise function. And you've actually seen the graph of a piecewise function as well. It's right here. Whoa, hey. Okay, as you look at the piecewise function here, it's broken up into pieces. We have a parabola. We have a horizontal line. We have this squiggle line thing going on. We got like three different graphs, don't we? Well, it looks like it would be pretty complicated to graph. We're going to make it super easy for you. Just look at the two graphs. What does the graph of y equals 3 look like? 
horizontal line through 3. Now, don't draw this because you're going to have to erase it. Or if you do draw it, make sure you draw it real light. Everybody okay with that first graph? Okay. Second graph is y equals x minus 4. What does that graph look like? A line with a slope of 1 that goes through negative 4. Looks something like that. So I want both of those graphs, but I don't want them both at the same time. In fact, I want to disrupt things at 2. At 2, I want to get rid of some things. I want to get rid of this section of y equals 3, and I want to get rid of this section of y equals x minus 4. And that will give me my piecewise function. But how do we do that in a way that's that's neater and a little bit more efficient? Well, here's how I tell kids to do it. I tell them to plug in the endpoints. We're going to have an endpoint happening at an x value of 2. If I plug in 2, what's the output? 3. So I plot the point 2, 3. And because it can't be equal at 2, I make it an open circle. And you all remember what that graph looked like. It was a horizontal line. So I'm going to draw the horizontal line just like that. Now I'm going to plug in 2 for the bottom part. 2 minus 4 gives me negative 2. You think I'll have an open circle or a closed circle there? Closed circle. Slope of 1. I draw a line with a slope of 1, and there's my graph. So the scratch work that I do ahead of time is just to think about what the graph looks like. What does x plus 3 look like as a graph? Slope of through 3, great. I've got a graph. What does x squared look like? Yeah, parabola at 0. So that's what you want to keep in your mind. Everybody got those two shapes in their mind right now? So I'm going to get rid of them, and I'm going to start by identifying the endpoints and then sketching the graph. I will plug in negative 1. What's negative 1 plus 3? 2. Open or close circle. Closed circle at negative 1, 2. And we said it's a line that heads on off with a slope of 1. And then we're going to graph x squared. We also plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Open or closed circle? Open. And it's going to head on down to 0 and back up the other side. So that's our piecewise function, a graph that's broken up into two different pieces. What's different about our last one? There's three of them. Sounds super confusing, huh? You think we're capable, or you think we should just shut it down for the day? I see the enthusiasm in your eyes. I'll feed off of that to get myself through. I plug in 1. I know that this graph right here, I, I know it looks like a parabola that's upside down. I know that the graph of negative 2 looks like this. I know the graph of x minus 5 looks like that. Those are the three graphs that I'm going to have to keep in my brain in order to sketch this. I'll start by plugging in 1. 4 minus 1 squared. Open or closed circle. Open. And we said it goes up to 4 and back down the other side. Ooh, for this middle one, I've got two endpoints. I plug in 1 and you get negative 2. I plug in 3 and you get 
Open or close circles? Both are open. Get a horizontal line that connects them together. And then the last one, plug in three and you get open or closed circle, open, slope of one, head on off in that direction. That's a piecewise function. What do you think? Not too bad? Could be worse. There's a glass is half empty, no, half full. Well, half of something. All right, here's your assignment. Uh, problems 1, 2, 5, and 10. 5 through 10 are super simple. You should be able to get them done well within the hour. In fact, you could possibly get through some of 41 through 46, okay? What do you need to hand in on Wednesday? The only thing you hand in on Wednesday is your study guide. That's the only thing, okay? Your homework will be due after MEA. Is there any question there? No, not the Monday after MEA, when you're, when you're uh, up around when your test is going to happen. I don't know if we'll quite get to a test uh, before the end of the week when we come back. We're, uh, we're a little stretched here right now for time. My guess is it'll be the following week, Wednesday. So, Okay. All right, so and remember the study guide is optional. If you hand it, it's worth one point added to your test, uh, depending on how you do. Good luck.